everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. We have, uh, we have, uh, let's Hello. try this again. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope you're ready for another great week. They're coming fast and furious. It's hard to believe we're already into February. Oh no. Just so you know, just a PSA here, folks. Next Sunday is Valentine's Day. Just giving you a little heads up. <gasps> Mostly for my own husband. <laughs> I didn't. I had no idea. Yeah. I got you a bowling ball. Oh, great. That's what I wanted. Okay, this week uh, we opened order pre-orders for the hardcover How to Draw. Uh, we will not be stocking the hardcover edition because it's super expensive for us to print and we can't sit on those books. Yeah. But we decided to go ahead and offer it and print a very small print run, basically printing to the orders that we received. So yeah. if you want a hardcover How to Draw, you need to order it by tomorrow night. Uh, we go to print on Tuesday morning. There's no going back after that. So Monday it, midnight. Well, mon Tuesday morning when I get up, I'll that's I'll cut it off. Okay. It's very professional. <laughs> I can tell. Anyway, it's twenty eight ninety nine, and we'll ship in late March. We will have the soft cover version in stock, and it'll be available at your local comic shop in early April, and that's eighteen ninety nine. So if you want the hardcover, it's now or never, folks. Yeah. Um, and the soft cover we'll just keep in print yeah. for eons. Maybe not eons, but for a while. Uh, Terry's busy on serial issue number three this week, mm -hmm. and he's having a lot of fun with Zoe. Yes. She's quite the little minx. <laughs> <laughs> issue two will be in stores um, February 24th, so that's coming up. Also, mm -hmm. uh, the serial number one second printing should be in stores next week. So catch up if you're behind. You can also get it on our website. Yeah, not everybody could get a copy of number one because it was just gone. Yeah. So and we print pretty close to the chest uh, because we don't want to store them. Yeah. Um, so if you want to get it, get in line because they'll go. Um, I've been I've been saying that the days of big overprinting is over. It is for us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but anyway, the second. Uh, Second printing should be in stores next Wednesday or this Wednesday. And you can also get it on our website right now. So um, so that's a great reason to go to the website. The mm -hmm. hardcover how to draw and serial number one reprint. Lots of stuff there. Yep. Um, lastly, for me, mark your calendars for April 9th and 10th for Terry Moore Live. Mm -hmm. Terry will be singing, dancing, and doing magic tricks. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. this is going to be so fun. Oh, dancing. Oh, it's just going to be great. <laughs> I do not dance. No, I do not dance. No. Not really. But you will be doing some live panels. And we'll have new art. Uh, the first time that ever and serial art will be available for sale. And we'll also have some special deals going on that. On the 9th and 10th. And on the 11th, you and I will be live. Maybe that's when we'll be doing our dance routine. Yeah, with puppets. Yeah. <laughs> Team America. <laughs> okay, oh, well, that's man. all That's all my news. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Ward? Did you just say that that'll be the first time that ever art has ever been up for sale? Uh-huh. Wow. I did, not, I did not know that. And cereal. Yeah. Well, because I, we don't sell issue number one. So um, okay. issue number two will be up for sale. What's going to happen to the issue number one art that we save? We have, we have, we have the number one issue we have the first art. and last issues of most of our series of the series we don't have strangers in paradise issue number one because somebody sold all the pages before i got involved <laughs> i don't know who you're looking at so these 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 pages that we're saving are where are they going the smithsonian or uh to trial or <laughs> <laughs> or to the bottom of the bar cage yeah. Well, that's just our our personal archive. So. Okay, this is one. This is the one we try to talk the kids into taking. Yeah, come on, and take they it. put it right out into recycling <laughs> yeah. the minute we're gone. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, so that's it for me. Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, just that I've been have been drawing um, serial three, and I'm so into it. I'm loving it. Good. Good. So, Anything with Zoe is, is worth um, reading. You know what? She's smart. 
don't cross don't cross paths you know swords with her she's smart smarter than she looks well and she's evidently very wily with a sword and a knife <laughs> don't stand too close <laughs> That's right. you, people have been practicing social distancing with zoe for a long yeah. time if not they've lived or died uh, to regret it yeah don't stand too close to zoe <laughs> Um, okay, well, I have just one question today. Okay. You guys need to send me some questions to mail at abstractstudiocomics.com. Or we're going to just start asking, you know, random questions. What are the neighbors the doing? Yeah, what are, the, what are those people doing across the street? Do the neighbors get a new car? That's our question <laughs> for today. Um, that's okay, because I have uh, a long drawing thing to do. I okay. have to polish a sketch. And you're drawing this picture that you're actually going to draw for how to draw because he actually did his drawing segment before I got up here. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, I'm let's, go on, let's go on to our question. Okay, I'm ready. And then if you want to, you can share a couple of your dance moves just to titillate the audience. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. And I'll <laughs> also talk about my years in the WWE because <laughs> clearly I've lost my mind. <laughs> okay, why have you continued to physically draw and hand letter your comic instead of moving to digital? That's an interesting question. I know. Um, I I really enjoy it, and I love the fact that the finished page has all that on there. Um, the finished page is is an actual story, you know, with the words on it and everything, uh, as opposed to art with blank bubbles or you know or just art. Um, although I I really do really appreciate uh, those beautiful pages that are highly rendered by the, the great talents. And the words aren't on there messing it up because sometimes a book may have a lot of dialogue on top of the art and you're thinking man i wish they hadn't covered all that art up um so when you go see the original um you know it can be gorgeous but in my case um i design for the words so the, des the yeah. panels are designed for it the bubbles fit in places where there's room for them i draw around for that um so i i kind of don't hit that same problem um but yeah, I just I just feel like it's part of the tradition. It, it's well, I also I think this question is asking why do you actually draw physically draw on paper? Ah, uh, yeah. As opposed to digitally, I think everybody that's come up in the last ten years, say, mm -hmm. are totally digital. Yeah, and and as they should be. I mean, because it is a it is a wonderful way to work digitally because. Um, you can make corrections and changes so fast. And I am hindered when I do my corrections on a page that, yeah, I do have to get out the old tools. So I'm working the same way as the guys from the 60s, but I kind of like it. Um, I started that way. I decided when the computers started coming up and they got better and better, and I, I did get a Wacom tablet. I do keep up with Photoshop and um, all that. I have a good scanner. Uh, but um, in terms of like, you know, committing to a big drawing screen and going for it like a syntax or something, um, I just, there was a point where the party, the parade took a right and I just kept going with what I was doing. Just to like, I want to hone in on it. And I think, honest, I don't want to make it more than it is. But I think it's the same way as like, why would you even still paint on canvas? You know, if I was a painter, I would still be making canvases. And so these are my little canvases. It's the same mindset. So I yeah. like to see the the original pages have so much more depth than the comic book page. That's true. And so I like to see the original art. And I don't know what are the the artists that are doing it one hundred percent digitally. There's just no original art. No, um, but they are able to make these gorgeous prints, of course, and then they can take their art and collect it into beautiful art books, of course. So it's all high res, uh, it goes to print easily. And since, if you think about it, uh, most of the people in the world will see this art in some form of print. So why not you go mean? computer to print? You know, work on computer only, it goes straight to print, all high res, gorgeous. Most of the world's gonna see it that way. Very few people have actually seen the Mona Lisa, but we've all seen the photo of the Mona Lisa. It's that principle. But um, I actually want to make the Mona Lisa canvas. Not that any of this qualifies, but you know, yeah. it's just kind of that old artist feel like, um, 
I can either Photoshop a funny looking rock or I can make a rock that really is funny looking and put it on my windowsill. It's just more of a tactile thing, you know. Um, but yeah, it, you know what? This is actually a very relevant question for a lot of artists, young and old. Uh, you know, pick, pick your tools. Now you do um, clean up your art in Photoshop. I mean, mm -hmm. on the computer for, um, for print. I do because like on something like this, um, there will be all kinds of little artifacts. Mm -hmm. And either I can get in there with the little white brush and go, or I can put it in Photoshop, zoom it up to 100, and that whole little place is filling the screen. And I can get it right, you know. Or, so, uh, but I try not to do, be too aggressive with Photoshop corrections because I want the published page to look like the art. At some point, um, I am totally willing to sell my pages and I want the page to look like what the person saw in the book. You can put them side by side and say, there you are, you know. Yeah. Um, it would be funny if my pages were all out of whack and then they're all corrected in Photoshop and made symmetrical and, you know, that would be a, that would be a scandal. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> And I've heard of a few of those scandals. We won't go into that now. No, we won't. We're not going to start naming names. No. But yeah, that's that's cheating. Uh, so. Okay, well, that's it for me. I'm going to go make shrimp scampi for the Super Bowl. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Doesn't that sound good? Yes, it does. Yeah. It's a gorgeous day here. It's going to be 70 degrees and the Perfect. Super Bowl's on and Robin's making shrimp scampi. I mean, life is good. Life is good. <laughs> okay. Hope you guys have a great week. Terry's going to meet you back here to draw. Yeah, you're going to watch me draw. Sketch. Francine. And so. we'll see you next week. Okay. Meet me here. Okay, so we started a sketch a couple of weeks ago, and I asked, uh, would you like to see me polish it uh, on camera, uh, as opposed to, like, you know, take it away to the corner and finish it out and then uh, later on put it up for sale in one of my sketch sales. Um, and the, you know, a lot of people said, yeah, I, I would love to see how you finish something out. So this is what I would consider, you know, like half a sketch. It's, it's roughly um, laid out. It's very sketchily indicated, you know, where parts are. You can see all the extra lines around the body and the arms and the hair and all that. It's kind of sloppy. But um, the figure is there, you know. So when it's time to go in and polish this, um, I really do kind of start at the top um, because once you get the head right and the eyes and the nose and all that that I'm looking at, um, then you know that you can uh, you judge everything else below the chin according to what's going on on the head. I do. Um, so at this point, I am still um, looking at uh, the measurements and, and doing what I can to improve them um, in terms of alignment on the eyes and the nose and the mouth and now the shoulders. Um, you know, you don't want her to be too buff, but um, it really matters about the angle and how wide they are. Um, and I think about uh, whether somebody is toned or not, this line right here, for instance, um, that's uh, that line is going in the wrong direction. Is I think what I'm trying to point out to you right here. It um, doesn't go straight down. It's a it's called the I forget what that's called. That part right there. It's not the lats. The lats are in the back, but that has an angle, and it's part of that uh, beautiful V look that you get when you're all fit. Um, there's the lats in the back and then that muscle in the front and it comes from doing push-ups and uh, uh, presses and things like that um, anyway that line hits in like that um, and then the back of the torso the rib cage um, comes is probably several inches behind there you know like four or five inches from the edge of that line to the back of the rib cage there in the back and then the angle of um, that drop right there, they don't necessarily line up. Um, that depends on the body type as to how you connect from there to there. 
depends on how much is there, how much bulk is there. Um, so I don't want to get too graphic about that on YouTube. In an art class, you would get very specific about it. Um, but, you know, it's one of those things like talking about doctor things, you know, like you're in an anatomy class or you're, you know, looking at um, cadavers in a medical class, you know, they would get very graphic and very specific. But if for the general public, that's gross. <laughs> so YouTube is a general public channel, and I don't want to get too specific about things like that, that artists uh, actually work very carefully on. Um, if you ever have questions about things, you can always approach me as an artist, and, and we can. I'm happy to chat with you about details and specifics uh, in terms of art and passing on what we know, we all need to share um, what we know. We can all move each other along. So um, now I'm looking at the alignments of everything from the um, point to point to point. And you can check that by laying the uh, figure horizontal. Would this look correct lying down? And even upside down, you can look for symmetry in terms of like uh, the elbow lengths according to the rib cage and the, sp uh, the flow of the spine there. Um, and that's what I'm doing there is just checking those angles and making sure that um, this, this rib cage, this spine works, that the proportions are there, that the angles are there. Um, if the hips go this way, the shoulders go that way. Um, so, you know, you're just checking all the different, your eye runs over all of it at once now. Um, okay, what, one of the, once you have the, the things laid out where you think they need to be, now you can get into the details of the drawing. Now you spend time on every detail like the sunglasses and the eyes and the nose, um, because, um, you don't want to do the details first and then realize that your figure is out of proportion. You wasted all your time on the details because you're going to have to erase it and do it over. So I've carefully made sure that um, the figure is done and now I just work on the details. So for me, um, everything starts at the eyes, you know, the windows are to the soul. Um, in this particular case, I'm picturing this. Uh, young lady who um, I'm going to conceal her identity to the end. That um, She's outside, of course. So the eyes are a little bit squinty, squinted. Um, and you can tell that by the, uh, the straight line of the bottom eyelid. The top eyelids uh, will always maintain some sort of round shape, but that bottom can be round or if it's squinting, you pull, you know, you tend to pull your bottom eyelid up. And then I'm working for a little attitude on the mouth. You can see one side is, goes up a little bit. And I deliberately do not want this super full upper lip um, because it's a sexual thing. And I don't, I don't kind of want that on this drawing uh, to have the, the big sexy lips. Um, I just wanted kind of more of like a girl next door look. Um, I'm more comfortable with that, and I just think, um, I think that's just very charming. So, that's a personal artist decision. You can, here's where we get into what we do and who we are and all that, and it starts reflecting in your art. What kind of person do you draw? Um, I'm rounding out that jawbone there in the left side. Now the other, this left side as we see it doing the same thing. It's harder to do it when you're pulling the hand versus um, pushing the hand. Um, so I have to be, I may do it in one stroke on the right side, but it takes me three tries on the left side, you know, that kind of thing. You need to know your weaknesses and allow for them. Um, I kind of thinned out the neck a little bit there and then imply the collarbone. And see those three really light lines forming the cheek? Um, I got that from Marvel Comics, and I have never seen those three really light uh, cheek lines, you know, like you would have seen on Mary Jane or something back in the old days. I've never seen those lines on DC characters, amazingly enough. Um, 
I don't know if there was a meeting and that was written down on the chalkboard. Uh, don't ever do that. <laughs> I like to picture it that way. Yeah, there was a strict meeting and there was a lot of yelling and tears. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's something I carry over from the Marvel days. Uh, John Romita Jr. and those guys who are so good at all this. Um, and you have chances here to uh, change the personality of the character with freckles or um, a little bit of red cheeks. These are decisions you can make as an artist now. Um, I'm going to leave it as simple as possible. Okay, going down and ready to uh, get serious about this figure. And you're thinking, oh no, you drew all your stuff. You erased all your lines. And I thought, I'm thinking, no, I erased all my mistakes. So now I go in with the heavy pencil, very dark pencil, as if it was an ink brush, and uh, start making the real lines. This girl is very toned, so those biceps go in. But if she was 20 years older, there would be a skin flap right there, uh, just as gravity has its effect on people. Um, and then down here to the, I'm going to give her a $20 leather wristband there necklace um not a necklace okay working on the thumb hooked into the pants and that remember that the space between the thumb and the first finger is uh, a pronounced uh, rectangle it's not a v it's not necessarily a v if you pull them apart like that there's a straight line there between them not a not a not a straight v um, decided to go ahead and put a belt on here, even though I'm not a big fan of belts, but I'll compromise and make it a, a, a Boy Scout belt. And when you're drawing uh, jeans, uh, if you draw jeans a lot, you kind of have to teach yourself that that belt loop right there, those two belt loops up in the front, the, um, the pant pocket goes up into those belt loops. So there's the rivet and then the curve for the, the front pocket. And then there's another rivet at the end of the pocket, and then that's where the seam, the side seam goes. And, you know, that's one of those things we all should know. We've spent our whole life looking at jeans, but when you're drawing, the first time you draw a pair of jeans and want the detail in there, you may think, wait, how does that work? Because <laughs> you never really pay any attention to it, you know. But as an artist, you start having to pay attention to all that. Um, I'm indicating how long the legs are here just by the length of the thigh and how wide the thighs are. Um, whether it's a sturdy uh, legs or a slimmer legs, you can tell it all by the hips and the thighs right there. Um, so this lady has uh, long legs. And I've decided to switch to a uh, t-shirt mode, get rid of the tank top, and go with this old-fashioned sweater over the shoulder look as if we're at a uh, jazz concert in Newport Beach. No, in Newport, not Newport Beach. Newport Beach is in California, and Newport is in uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, somewhere up there where they have the jazz festival. So those two lines do not connect um, in terms, they're more like parallel. And then um, how they, how, what, what, what the body does to connect those two lines depends on the person as to how much uh, bulk is there. And I'm tightening up the drawing now on the hands, allowing for three-dimensional space on these fingers, moving them down a little bit. Once you start seeing the hand in 3D, it will help you an awful lot in these various positions so that you don't need a hand model for this stuff. Um, you just always think of it as a 3D thing. Um, what fingers are behind the others and all that. Okay, finishing out the hair and getting it to do its thing. Darkening up the sweater so that there's some contrast on the drawing. And now it looks like um, a real person. Uh, the way a real person would dress, uh, not a superhero. And that's always my goal. Um, 
and I think that, you know, if this was a day at the uh, outside, I picture this as being a striped shirt. When you're drawing striped shirts, um, remember that there is a seam right there uh, for the arm. And uh, they do try to match up the patterns, but there is always going to be a change of direction on the patterns. And um, that's how you do that. Some people uh, kind of get into drawing that and then they wonder, you know, what do I do? Do I just draw straight across? And sometimes in fast and easy cartooning you do, uh, where you don't care about all that. Um, but um, when you're trying to draw like this, you try to get directions correct on things like that, the details, because it makes a difference. Um, once again, there's a chance to uh, really, there you go, clean up the outside and clean up the loose lines. And I pretty much, I probably will put my circle there with my compass and it will look like um, the finished drawing. And I'm going to darken in this hair. And when I do, look who appears. Looking more familiar now? It's Francie. Hello, old friend. Nice to see you. And I think that uh, Kachu would approve. Okay. Have fun and uh, talk to you next week.